India's most vast stretch of forest, the Western Ghats. Life pulsates right in the undergrowth of the canopy. The wet, slippery slopes of these ancient forests provide the ideal habitat for planet Earth's small creatures, amphibians, the first vertebrates to walk on land. Across the world, these small, colorful, magical creatures are facing a silent extinction. Up to half of the world's 6,000 amphibian species are in danger. Climate change, habitat loss, infectious diseases are threatening the world's frog species like never before. So little is known about these enigmatic creatures and that's why the Lost Amphibians of India project. Scientists and researchers are heading out to forests, rivers, streams across India to look for species that have just not been seen since they were first described by science. Are they dead? Have they been lost forever? Take for instance the bubble nest frog, listed as critically endangered. It's just been rediscovered after 136 years. And then there's the elegant torrent frog that lives in forest streams and calls from the edge of river beds. It's now been discovered after 73 years in Karnataka. So who are these people who are unraveling the mystical life of these creatures? Hello, I'm Varad Giri from the Bombay Society of Society Maharashtra. Kumbat Meghalaya. Kanali Uttarakhand. Gargi Tamil Nadu. Ashish Madhya Pradesh. Robin, Karnataka. Uh, I am Dr. Biju from Delhi University. John Church, Global Wildlife Conservation. Bahar Dad CN and IBN. I'm going to be joining the Lost Amphibians of India project. We're going out across the country to search for tiny, tiny creatures which live on the forest floor. And we're going to be joining all these people on their expedition. Heading this expedition is frogman Dr. Biju. Oops. Oh. <laughs> it's on his search for the lost amphibians that Biju discovered an entirely new species of frogs in 2008 in the forests of the Western Ghats. It's the purple frog that makes an appearance above ground for only two weeks of the year. Imagine that for decades nothing was known about this odd looking animal. The question really is, in a country where big animals like tigers and elephants are threatened, why should we care about frogs? The frogs can predict the health of an environment. That is the reason that the scientists attributed a new name for the frogs that is the environmental indicators or environmental barometers. I joined the frog scientist at Augustia Hills, Kerala, a forest rich in biodiversity. And here, just in a small stream, within minutes, with a little help from the frog scientists, we discover hundreds of tiny creatures. And this is a male individual. Okay, how do you know? Yeah, uh, there is a, a nuptial pad here on the finger. Okay. So that is used in clasping the female. And you can see the uh, white patches on the foot with which they flag the foot to attract the females. Frogman Guru Raja, who is leading the expedition in Karnataka, has to his credit rediscovered several lost species. I heard a call from above the ground. So then I turned my torch. We have headlights and all. And we turned and it supposed to, uh, like, it looked very brilliant. Mm. It had a uh, uh, golden eye mm. with uh, blister kind of things in the eye. Mm. And there were two broad golden bands on that and it was brownish. Mm. And that was the first uh, discovery from Kerala, from my side. The search for the frog species will continue late into the night. Yeah, I've seen this. Oh, wow. Wow, there is a fairly big animal. Yeah. As night descends, the forest echoes with the sounds of the frogs. 
male frogs on the lookout for a suitable wife. And our frog scientists begin their work. But this is a female, yeah, right? Yeah, this is a female. Yeah. The female is now, you know, towards the streams for, uh, okay. for searching a male. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> All right. But for Dr. Biju and his students, oh. this is prime time. Dr. Biju, what I want to ask you is these markings which are here. Is it using it to attract the females or? This is a species, species specific character. You know, okay. Each and every species belongs to this group. Generally, you can identify by using this, uh, you know, unique. Uh, yeah. color pattern and right. all together with other more you know, other external features okay so we're not going to stress out this little creature anymore further he's been in my hand for a few minutes now we leave it back and dr biju is going to show us some more fascinating creatures maybe i should kiss it and it'll turn into prince charming mm -hmm. maybe not okay <laughs> sunrise and it's another day for the frog men and women. The agenda for today, a hunt for creatures known as the Sicilians. Yeah, I got one. Bahar, I got something. So, look what I got. It's a Sicilian. And I have no clue what Sicilians really are. To me, they just seem like worms. They're not earthworms because they have a backbone. If you can feel it they're quite sure. stiff okay yeah they yeah they are really good burrowers digging they have very strong head okay so where's the head and where's the tail <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> this is the head this is the head that's the head yeah and they have really strong skull okay if you and does it bite no it doesn't bite at all so if someone were to find this in their garden should they kill it or what should they do no we're trying we're really trying to uh, create awareness among the local people because they are there is a blind myth that they are poisonous very little is known to science about sicilians oh here 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 where is it oh here 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 wow so many they live a That's largely a secretive point. life often suffering a mistaken identity between a snake and a worm oh, show us your face you got to show your face to the yeah, camera yeah, yeah. That's when we experience a magical moment. Life being created right in front of our own eyes. I can see the tiny newborn Sicilians swirling inside the pink eggs. Right where we've been digging. 25% of these species are supposed to be egg laying and the eggs are guarded by the female. Since it's a nest, we decide not to disturb the creature. I know after seeing them this up close, I have newfound respect for these lesser mortals. Amphibian specialist Dawn Church, who's the international expert on the Lost Amphibians project, considers the effort of the Indian scientists as vital for research. The Lost Amphibians Initiative of India is very relevant to conservation because if we can't find them, we can't save them. So it's really important to first determine where populations of these threatened species are and then build a conservation action around that population. Time is running out for these tiny creatures. An infection known as the chytrid fungus has killed nearly 30% of the world's amphibian population. It has not hit India yet, but the amphibians in India do face other threats, like deforestation. This entire hill, once a thick forest, was cleared to make way for a tea plantation. Across the Western Ghats, hundreds of dams are being built that will divert water and cause tiny streams to dry up. For Dr. Biju and his team, it's a race against time to discover species before they become extinct. After the break, we move with them to the Perambiculum Tiger Reserve and we stumble upon an entirely new species. Yeah, it is an entirely a new species of uh, toad that's scientifically known as Buffo.
Welcome back. You're watching a CNN IBN special and I'm taking a peep into the magical world of these tiny creatures, the amphibians of India. Right in front of me is the species known as the Hylarana bhagamandala. This species was rediscovered in Karnataka almost after 74 years. Imagine that. The magnificence of the Western Ghats comes alive in the rain. We've made our way to North Kerala, to the Perambiculum Tiger Reserve. Bison, elephants, tigers dominate this landscape. What happened, Dr. Vidu? There is an elephant inside and they are making jump. Can we go or no? No, no. That place is not possible. We have to go this side. But for this man, Dr. Biju, the hunt is on for India's lost amphibians. Very interesting. Sir, I found something. What is that? Oh! oh. <laughs> there, there. Okay. Oh, this is a bicolored frog. <laughs> of course, when you're looking for something that tiny, the search is tougher. Is it there? Oh, that's the animal we are looking. Why were you smelling it? Say, uh, this is so funny, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, every frogs, every, at least a group, they have their own... Smell? Their specific smell. Does uh, this one smell good? Not that much, but uh, this is like a... Can I smell it? Yeah. Oh, mm. it just smells of marsh. Yeah, marsh and fruit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beside streams, some frogs actually live on the canopy and that's why you need an expert tree climber to go look for them and that person is Thinkbird. Oh my god, he's really like a langur. No, <laughs> his grip is very important. One of Dr. Biju's students, he is credited with having discovered many of the tree-dwelling frog species. Well done! <laughs> and one of the species that Dr. Biju discovered was Rochester's Ponmuri. It was discovered and described by Biju in 2009. Its pale white color makes it look like an alien from outer space. The species is restricted to the Western Ghats. Is this something you rediscovered? It's not rediscovered. The new species which I described in 2007. Wow. That is the, that is the reason we are saying that oh, is the, the tree frog. <laughs> they, they oh. Oh. Look at the fingers. Oh the my bird. god. Mm, it's nice. beautiful. Yes. Today we are searching three species. I hope you all know that what are the species we are searching in Karabin. Okay? Is there going to be a very long night? Yeah, it has to be at least minimum 12 or maybe one o'clock. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. As evening descends, the frog people get ready for another night search. Making our way to the Perambiculum Tiger Reserve. We are not looking for tigers or elephants or any of the big, sexy, charismatic mammals. We are on our way to look for frogs. There's a good cloud cover, so we may get we may get some frogs today. The night seems long and dark, but for the frog people, the hunt for their animals is like an obsession. They seem oblivious to leeches, the wet marsh, or the rains. So what did you see here? Mm, something very, according to him, he seeing saying that it's not a fidgety area, that means they're common one. And after a long wait, we have it. Dr. Biju's students have found an entirely new species. We may have made our own piece of conservation history here. We seem to have discovered a new species. Dr. Biju, can you tell us what do we have here? Yeah, it is an elderly, a new species of uh, toad that's scientifically known as Buffo. Next morning, he may have discovered a new species, but work doesn't stop. Biju takes his work to the people who live around the park, local people who live with wildlife the whole year around. 
ജനങ്ങൾ ഇതിനെ കാണാനായിട്ട് എത്രയോ ആൾക്കാർ കാത്തിരിപ്പുണ്ടെന്ന് അറിയാമല്ലോ മൊത്തം Biju shows his photos of the different creatures hoping to inspire them to conserve them. I really want to conserve the frogs of India. Uh, I I I'm really want to see the frogs forever in the wild rather than showing some photograph in the future this is an extinct animal of India or this is an extinct animal of Delhi this is the extinct animal of Persian Gulf. Always there. As the team begins discussion for yet another expedition I must leave them Discoveries like this bring a mixed emotion of gloom and hope gloom because of the lurking threat of extinction Some of these tiny species may go extinct even before they're discovered But there's hope that these frog men and women through their expeditions will prove that size does not matter and that their hard work will help keep these tiny creatures alive in our living eden